Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Sorry to be away for so long, I promise I'm not dead. Uh, as probably everybody else has experienced, COVID has really changed my life. Um, I mostly travel for work and I really haven't been able to travel uh, and so that's kind of had me shift gears. Uh, one of the things I'm working on now is doing more online training and support. So keep your eye on mechanicaladvantage.com for training and support options that will be appearing on the website, hopefully on Tuesday afternoon. So if you're watching this, it's Sunday, hopefully by Tuesday, that new system is all implemented and on the website. And you can check out some of the classes. They're all going to be online, going to do some options, uh, some night stuff, some during the day stuff, and maybe even some weekend stuff to try to accommodate everybody who might want to be able to join online and uh, it doesn't really matter where you are as long as you have a computer and fusion you should be able to hop on the uh, the classes or the support plans and go ahead and work with me so a couple of things I wanted to talk about one is this machine that you can see in the corner so yep I got a machining center in the garage now it's pretty awesome this is a Sile X7 uh, it's running a Siemens control it has a 12,000 RPM spindle, 7.5 horsepower, tool changer, tool setter, all the good stuff built into it. So I can't wait to get this thing running. Uh, struggling a little bit with power. So if we come take a look over here, I have an American rotary phase converter. It's a 30 horsepower phase converter. It's super awesome. However, my residential system can't accommodate it with the amount of amperage that it requires. So between my air conditioning and my heaters and whatever, the electrical code here states that I don't have enough amperage if those things were all going to be run at the same time. And so I'm going to a smaller phase converter and when that gets in here, hopefully we'll get that hooked up pretty fast and get the machine powered up and running. I uh, also wanted to show the, my shop, also known as my garage. You can see it's not super big. Um, I've got to be able to get a car in here in the wintertime because it's Minnesota and it gets super cold. So space is going to be at a premium, so I'll be working on projects like getting shelving up, uh, trying to maximize my room in this garage as much as I can. Another project I'll probably do will be to build shelving so I can put totes and things up above this garage where it's completely wasted space. It should be uh, enough space for me to get totes and rails to be able to keep stuff up there, which will be pretty nice. And so since it is Minnesota, we're going to have to do things like keep us a, uh, a snowblower in here, a lawnmower in the summertime, all those kinds of things. So this has to remain a functional garage. Other projects that I'm going to work on is lighting in this garage sucks. The only lighting that there is are these two light bulbs uh, for when the door is closed and it's not nearly bright enough in here to be able to work. So I'll need to install in a lighting system, put up a bunch of lights up top here. and. Because I am in Minnesota, like I said earlier, it gets really cold here. So it's not uncommon for us to push negative 20 Fahrenheit or about negative 30 Celsius, sometimes a little bit colder than that. Uh, so I'm going to be peeling off the sheetrock, making sure that my insulation is up to snuff for the garage. And also up in that corner right there, I'm gonna be putting up a heater to keep this place at at least about 50 degrees all winter long. So. Those are some of the workshop projects I'm going to be working on. I also I wanted to get this floor epoxy. You can see it's kind of worn. Um, when I bought this place, somebody had put garage paint down and that paint is now peeling up and I wanted to replace it and redo it. But with the time I'm in the year, uh, the funding situation, things like that, the floor is probably gonna have to wait until next spring for it to get changed out. So those are some of the things that I'll be documenting in here. And as I get uh, other tools and I get uh, different things that come in, we'll do some deep dive and take a look at some of the things that I'm using. If we walk over to the machine, one of the things I'm excited about is getting this M-Lock vise up and running. I love these vices. Uh, I'll show you how this works when we get into a video, but basically that center section works on a wedge. So you turn that center bolt and it creates an incredible amount of force that pushes outwards. This is a dual station, but you can use it as a single station vise as well. So uh, that will be pretty awesome to start out with. 
now to get that going. And you can see even this machine, I haven't even cleaned the grease off of it yet. So once uh, the electrician gets that new phase converter all powered up, um, be able to get the machine fired up and uh, get everything working. Washdown hose is still in its original packaging in the corner. So you can see I haven't done a lot of stuff with this machine yet. <clears throat> I have got some pretty awesome coolant, I think, from Hankstifers. So I've got a uh, five gallon bucket of clean out, got a five gallon bucket of their 5080 product, which I'm excited to try because it is uh, pretty clear, maybe not 100% crystal clear, but pretty clear. And it's not going to rust the machine. So I've had some experience with the Blazer 735 and the Blazer 735 has caused some issues like corrosion. So I'm gonna stay away from that. And I've also got five gallons of whey oil as well. So uh, I'd like to thank Hanks First for their help and I can't wait to get using these products. So, uh, so that's kind of the state of where I'm at right now. This is the garage. I uh, need to get all this up and running as soon as possible. And some of the projects have to happen before winter comes. So some will happen sooner than later. Step one is to get the power on. It'll be fun to have a machine so it won't just be voiceover tutorials. I'll be able to show you guys uh, CAD and CAM things and then be able to come out to the shop and actually throw them out and cut them. This hopefully goes away out of here pretty soon. I'm working on our replacement part. So if I go down here, maybe I can zoom in close. There's this bracket that's made out of an extrusion and that extrusion is no longer made. And so this uh, corner bracket here has broken. The company doesn't make them anymore. And so I'm using Fusion to fab up some sheet metal brackets that will uh, serve the same purpose. And probably look for a future video on those once I know they can be manufactured and we can show the process of getting those back. So that'll give me a little bit more room and I'll be able to put stuff in the garage. Hopefully I can just keep my car on this side and keep all the tooling and everything like that over on that side. Take those the, the garbage can and the recycle and maybe put those back over there. Uh, kind of, it'll be nice to get rid of the phase converter, uh, you know, pallet, and get that put behind the machine with an air compressor. Airlines is another thing I'll be running around the, the garage to make sure I have uh, air everywhere. So anyway, just wanted to let you guys know that I'm still alive. Keep your eye on mechanicaladvantage.com for the new training and support options, as well as a blog that will get fired up as, uh, on there so you can take a look at more in-depth information on the video topics that I post on YouTube. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you have any requests for projects you wanna work on, some of you reached out to me and some of the things I've been working on lately, uh, hit me up, info at mechanicaladvantage.com. And as always, thanks for watching.